SARS, Ebola, H1N1, and now the novel coronavirus. For most of the world population, these diseases bring death and uncertainty. But for one scientist, they all have one thing in common. You know, this is happening so often nowadays that we are getting used to the massive hysteria. Remember that we are having since at least 20 years ago different outbreaks, different pandemias. Remember all of that? That the media threatened us and said humankind is going to disappear, which it is not possible. It is not possible for several reasons. Because microbes reproduce themselves in the susceptible population. And not everybody, and not the whole humanity, it is susceptible to the reproduction of that particular virus. Dr. Manuel Elkin Patarroyo is a Colombian professor of pathology and immunology. He is most known for his groundbreaking scientific research and as the creator of the first partially effective vaccine against malaria. In an exclusive interview, Patarroyo helps us shed light on a topic that is full of unknowns for so many. But for scientists, it's simply part of a cycle. First of all, microbes evolve. All the living organisms evolve spontaneously, you know. It is a way not only to look for alternatives to survive, but also is the mechanism through which they survive. So if you, for example, being a virus, infect me, I will try to develop defenses against you. So what you do is that you mutate, and such mutations, probably a new alternative, a new strain, a new virus will appear. That's one point. The second point is that myself, as a very complex organism, evolved also. So now that I know and I recognize you, I have to be prepared for the next generation of mutants. And therefore, my immune system will mutate also. So thus, it is just a matter of evolution, the way microbes and living organisms survive. And that's the reason we are always, and we always will be exposed to new variants, to new strains. But we are preparing ourselves also for that, mutating in order to cope with these mutations. In February, Colombia became the first country in Latin America to develop its own diagnostic test for the coronavirus. That means health officials could have a diagnosis in eight hours without having to send samples to the United States. And as the World Health Organization calls on countries to be in a phase of preparedness, Colombia announced in late February that it was raising the alert level from low to moderate. No hay ningún riesgo para Colombia's health minister reaffirmed that the country is prepared to face the public health challenge, but is on heightened awareness due to the increase in coronavirus cases in Europe and the migration flow between Colombia and countries in Europe. Patarroyo says officials can learn from past epidemics like the Ebola outbreak in 2015, where clinical suspicion of an infection would lead to prompt isolation of patients. It was to establish a ring around the people who are infected and who have direct contact with the infected people. But look at what is happening right now. You know, all of the diseases have a reproduction time where they can infect the other people. We call it the productive phase. In order to demystify COVID-19, the disease caused by the coronavirus, Patarroyo says citizens should take into account the mortality rate, which is at 2%, and that in order to contract any disease, several factors come into play, such as genetic background and environmental conditions. While China has been the epicenter for coronavirus, it has not fallen victim to the life-threatening malaria which takes the lives of half a million people a year, 
with children, accounting for 67 percent of all malaria deaths worldwide. This is probably they will be resistant to malaria, for example. In China, there are very few cases, only to the southernmost part of China, very few cases of malaria. And in here, in Africa, you have malaria everywhere. Patarroyo has dedicated 40 years of his life to finding the malaria vaccine. He claims his success has been in finding the part of these viruses that latches on to infect microorganisms. Let's say that I am a microbe, you know, to infect you, I will not use my liver, my kidney, my heart, nothing. I have to grab you first and I have to do it through my hands. So what we learned, it was, it was that we had to recognize, to identify the hands of the microbes. These are extremely relevant and they do not mutate because if not, the function is lost. So what we developed it was the methodology to produce chemically synthesized hands and these are the new vaccines. He works with his son Alfonso and a total of 80 scientists at the Colombian Institute of Immunology Foundation in Bogota. Their focus is on chemically synthesized vaccines. It's an approach unlike most efforts around the world, which focus on biologically produced vaccines, which typically contain an agent that resembles the disease-causing microorganism. Patarroyo and these Colombian scientists claim chemical vaccines are much quicker to produce, more economical, and because they are in powder form, they are easily transported to developing countries. Patarroyo is quick to credit his mentors, but also acknowledge the work of scientists in Ocean Away in Beijing, who, unbeknownst to the world, conducted groundbreaking research. I have to pay a tribute to the Chinese. You know, they were the first ones who chemically synthesized a protein. But unfortunately, by the time that they did that, you know, in China the policy was to publish only in Chinese. So they were ahead of my mentor, also my third mentor, Bruce Merrifield, something like three years before. But Bruce didn't know anything about the work that the Chinese were doing. And the Chinese, the Chinese Academy of Sciences, know that very well, that they were the first one who developed the methodology to produce chemically synthesized molecules, proteins. Around the world, health officials and pharmaceutical companies have worked to identify treatments or create a vaccine to fight the coronavirus. In late February, U.S. biotech firm Moderna claimed to ship an experimental coronavirus vaccine to U.S. government researchers. But even as approval and tests move swiftly, a biological vaccine wouldn't be available for at least a year or 18 months. Patarroyo says vaccines can be a solution to these global health crises, but it will never be possible to eradicate diseases like malaria with just a vaccine. Medicine, preventive public health measures, and long-term programs are all equally part of the solution. And as a scientist, Patarroyo is quick to stick to facts and keep emotions out of it. He is insistent that with the new diseases, early detection, without the element of fear, is key to an effective response. First of all, paying attention to the diseases, paying attention, but not inducing this massive hysteria because we will get used to the pandemias and when the real pandemia appears, nobody's going to pay attention to it.